Well, okay. Uh, it's approaching minimums. Yep, just like you're doing, just nice, gentle movements. Very good. Nicely done. And reverse thrusters on, let's give them two a good pull-up. Yep. And you just got a little bit on your left pedal, just ever so slightly. Yep, just to there. Yeah, it's very good. And reverse thrusters away for us to just push them two all the way back down. Well done, just like that. Good smooth landing, so you barely heard it touch down the runway. If you do a hard landing here, <laughs> yep. So if you do a hard landing here, you're really out of thumps. So well done, very impressive that. All right, you can see it is quite tricky to line it up on the centre line. Takes a lot of little turns. Yeah. So enjoy that. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Okay. All right. Uh, we could do we could do Hong Kong last if you want. So save the best to last. Uh, what I was thinking we could do now is do an airline route down to Queenstown. I mean, the good thing about that is um, it's nice, challenging landing as well. Sort of works your way up towards. Uh, Kai Tak as well. Good scenery on the way down there too. Is that, that all right with you? Yeah, sure. yeah okay. Alright, so I'm going to pop away our flaps here. Take off our brakes. What do you do for me? Is you going to flick off the three, uh, four silver ones, sorry. Okay, then, yep, just leave those leave those ones on. Yeah, and using your tilly wheel now, you're going to follow the centre line all the way down. Okay, and I'll show you where to turn off. So I'll just give us a little bit of power just to get us taxiing. It's about an eight second lag, you see. There we go. Very good, and I'll just uh, set us up for Queenstown here as well. We're going to be heading down at about 24,000 feet. Oh, okay. Ever been down to Queenstown at all uh, before? Only on this car railway I came over before. Yeah, oh, cool. Not a car, though, not flying. Yeah, do you enjoy it down there? Nah, uh, alright. <laughs> I had to look after this. I was driving this old lady around. I'm not saying <laughs> on camera since we've been recorded. <laughs> it was a great time. What kind of a uh, car were you driving? Horsley English uh, motor car. So yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Good fun? Beautiful. Yeah. I've got an old 1958 Wolsey at home. Oh, awesome. There we go. <coughs> so we're going to do this straight away because you don't have to program in the computer. Yep, so because we're already in Christchurch, we can head straight there. Yep. And you just follow this one up here around to the right. Do you have a commercial pilot's license yourself? Uh, not as yet, no. So how, come how come you're so familiar with all this? Uh, just by working here, got trained up by people oh, okay. who do fly and stuff like that. Also, um, often Pacific Blue come in here and do some of their training as well, so yeah. I've been able to watch them do their thing as well. So, so all I'm doing with the computer here is just telling it that we... Uh, Oops, I was watching that That's right. <laughs> what is it? Uh, that's Singapore. Yep, Singapore Airlines. Looks like a triple seven. Okay, you're just going to keep following this sort of straight ahead one there as well. The left. Yep. Very good. And then you follow it round to the left here. Yeah. So you got all your New Zealand hangers out here, same as what you see at the airport. There we go. I'll try this. Oops. <laughs> right. And then just follow this one here, around to the left. Yep. So we'll just be taking off in the opposite direction this time. Strobe light back on. Left or right? Yeah, left. And then just line up in the centre runway there as best you can. Uh, yep. Yeah, just keep going around to the left a little bit more. There we go. 
Is a real aircraft touchy like this? Yeah, it's a little bit more touchy in a simulator. They do that on purpose though, just so it's uh, a little bit harder for the pilots when they're doing their training. Mm. Makes flying the real thing a little bit easier there. It is still quite touchy on the real aircraft though, but it's something you get used to after a while. Yeah. Alright, so you're nicely lined up there in the centre. What you do is flick on your four silver switches there again. Okay, I'll just turn on our transponder here. Uh, let's get set the auto brake, one click to the left of RTO. Very good, okay. So we're heading, uh, just following this pink route line to take us all the way down to Queenstown, and we'll just be climbing all the way up to 24,000 feet this time. Yep. Now, when we get out near Burnham here, we're going to be doing a turn to the right. You just want to do about 10 degrees bang of, um, so bang of a turn there. So you just, yeah, first one on the left there for your 10 degrees around to the right. Okay. Try it. Yep. Oh, so just your first one? Oh, yep. First one. Yep. So I'll just do 10 degrees for you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if you're ready, you can go. Still the same attitude? Yep, though. yep, very good. 10 plus 10, yeah. Yep, awesome. Okay, so you're going to go left hand on your controls, right hand on your throttles, oh, yeah. all the way forward, maximum power. Very good. So just on 80 knots. 100 knots. You just got a little bit on your left pedal, just a tiny bit. V1 and rotate, so pulling back, raise that nose to 10 degrees. There we go. Very good. Okay, nice positive rate of climb, so retract the flaps. Ah, just keep, keep it straight for now, I'll tell you when to do your turn. And we're just passing through a thousand feet. And landing gear is up and off. And just passing through two thousand feet. How long is the flight to Queenstown? Queenstown takes about half an hour. Got time to get to 24,000? Yep. <laughs> yeah, you just ease that nose back down just to 10 degrees there. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> That's right. It's a beautiful uh, aeroplane. The fly, eh? Yeah, definitely. Uh, 19. Jesus yep. <laughs> have more fun than my young son, 25. What does he do? Oh, I can't tell you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you do here? He's just going to do a 10 degree turn around to your right. Oh, so, oh okay. Yep, so just, oh, just, okay. Yeah, just with your hands. Yep. To the right. So to your right, yep. That's right, yeah. There we go. Yep, and that's 10 degrees there. Very good. I thought I didn't hear the bank warning. <laughs> do you normally do that? Uh, only when you get to 30, so... Oh, okay, right. Yep. 10 degree bank. Uh, I'm down 5, so I better come back a bit. Yep, that's one. So it's passing through 13,000 feet there. Is this recording all of our conversations as well? Yep. Great. And you just roll back to wings level there now. Very good. You just go just a touch to your right. And a little bit more. Awesome. <coughs> this 
touchy touchy. <laughs> What are you doing there? Just go in just a tiny little bit more power there. Yeah, what are you looking at there? Ah, just these ones here. Oh yeah. Yep. <coughs> what should it be? Uh, I've just got it sitting just around about the 100 mark at the moment. Just trying to keep it there for now. So it will, will change as we climb as well. So we just passed through 23,000 feet, so we're almost at 24,000. See how close I can get it. <laughs> So uh, this is the tricky part, so as our speed speed's climbing here, it's a different point where we hold the nose. You're just going to keep it just on that first one there. Okay. Yep. <coughs> I want to see that speed build up for a little bit. Very good, and then you just drop it just under that first line now, so it sits just below it. Just to about there. Very good. What's the stall speed? Stall speed's 180. What's the takeoff speed? Takeoff speed about 140. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Just investigation this morning. What are we going to do here? Is if you just go auto throttle on, I'm just going to stick this on just for a couple of minutes. You're going to go flight director on there as well. Then you're going to press in level change, hitting select, and command A over here. Very good. Now I'm just going to make just a slight adjustment here for a second. Okay. I'm going to get slow us down just to 340 knots. Very good. Now this time what I'm going to do is just pressing the LNAV button there for me. What that one's going to do is the autopilot's actually going to follow this pink route line all by itself so we didn't even have to tell it to do its turns now, it'll do them automatically. Alright, now I'll just talk through our airline route and for our uh, navigational display and stuff, after I've done that then I'll give you back control, you can fly the rest of the way. Okay, so when we're passing near Burn and we pass through a point called Boo, before we pass through a point called Gooput. Uh, if you look at the map here, you've got Gulov and Cowdy as well. Now these aren't real place on the ground, they're just points along the airways route that we use for navigation. Okay, so what you do is just follow that pink route line. As you get to each one of these points, they're going to disappear. Then the next one will get highlighted in pink, and it'll give us a new distance readout. So as long as you follow that, you won't get lost. Uh, also, if you press in the legs button here on the flight management computer, yep. Yeah, it tells you which direction to take to get to each one of these points, what are the distances in between. So you take 218? Yep, very good. So it. That's after you give me control of it. Yep, yeah. and uh, that will just keep you following that path quite nicely. Yeah. 218 and 217 to... Yep, 
Very good, okay, and so these ones here are the distances in between. All right. Now, before you've been controlling the autopilot using your selectors, when you're hitting that LNAV button, like I said before, it starts following that pink roo line all by itself. Where it's doing that is it's getting these directions from the flight management computer now. now. You can even set it up a step further, where it does a certain height, certain speed through one of those points. The time it gets to the next point, during different height, different speeds. It could do quite a bit. Right. So heading? Heading, uh, it's just this one up here at the moment. Right. So that's just the autopilot. Turn right soon, right? Ah, well, the autopilot will do it in a minute. Oh, okay. Yep, just slowly getting back on course there. It's just adjusting itself. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is going to keep flying at 24,000 feet to get to TD there for top of descent. That's when I start our descent down into Queenstown. Okay. Now, I'll talk to you more about landing in Queenstown when we get closer. Just some things to keep in mind is that Queenstown is quite a short runway. It's sort of about less than half the size of Christchurch there. And it's also got a nice bit cliff at the start of it. So it's a little bit challenging, but uh, you'll do fine as we come in there. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, I don't know if you do you know where Lake Tekapo is in the South Island at all? Yeah. Yeah. So where these white peaks are here, the lake's actually just behind those. So when we get up a little bit closer, you'll be able to see it out to the right there. And we will be passing through bits of cloud on the way down there as well. Okay. Now I'll just show you this as well while we're here. We can actually turn on all the other airports. So you've got Timaru, Omru, Dunedin, Alexandra, Queenstown, Wanaka and Mount Cook. So that's a nice handy feature to have if we ever have an emergency. Um, you can just pick an airport you want to land at. The only thing is you just got to know what size aircraft gets into what size oh, airport there. <laughs> ah, you'd be carrying charts on board that would tell you. Yep. So I'll set this one back anyway. Now, in a minute, when I give you back control, what we'll do is leave in the auto throttle. So it's kind of like driving a car and cruise control. That's going to keep us at our speed, but you'll have control of direction. Okay, now there's two ways you can fly it. One is just by visually looking outside just at the uh, horizon there again, just trying to keep it the same point on the screen. Now, when we go through the cloud, you're going to lose that, so you can rely on your instruments. Now, to do that, you want to keep that black box just between 2.5 and the artificial horizon. The, yep, so the trick is to not go outside of that box. If you do, it climbs very quickly or descends very quickly. It's quite hard to control. You can actually climb descend just within that little box. That's how sensitive it is. But the, uh, the biggest aim really is to try and keep it in the middle to keep yourself at 24,000 feet. Now, if you do need to adjust yourself, it's just little movements and your controls is all you little need. Okay, now, so you can see Lake Tikapo out there to the right a bit clearer now, just behind the peaks. Yeah. Very good. So uh, if you want, you can take back control here. You're just pressing that little black button again. And that will give you back control. Very good. Now, 38, 30 miles to Gulliff. Yep. You're bang on course. So should I be on 218 or I'm turning at 218? Uh, miles you're on, on 21 out now, so that's good. Well, am I not, oh, am I not on 21220? Ah, uh, nope. So you get so you get the accurate readout up the top there two one eight. So when I turn, it'll, that number will change. Yep. Now in real life, does it matter? Is there a tolerance going under and over to the altitude? Uh, well, to be honest, you heard be on autopilot for about ninety percent of the flight, so it wouldn't really matter anyway. It'd be bang on it, but uh, yeah, you just try and keep as close as you can to it anyway. So that, that's fine. <laughs> 24 miles to build off. So this uh, dime off the number here is just another aircraft out to our left there. Yep. That's just uh, below us, so the minus sign shows it's below, sitting at uh, 20,000 feet below us there. And it's, uh, it's actually climbing as well, so the up arrow just shows it's climbing. Stay on 218 to Calloway. Yep. Caldy. Caldy, yep. 
Okay, now we've just got another aircraft approaching acro across the same uh, airline route as us at the moment. He's above us at 3,000 feet. At 3,000? 3,000 feet above us. Above us? Yep. You said below, didn't you? What was that, sorry? Didn't you say below? Uh, no, so that, one, that one there's below us, this one here's above us. <laughs> Alright, so we'll probably see him out the window, I'll point him out to you as best I can. Oh really, can you actually see him? Yep. <laughs> so. um, now, am I supposed to be on 218 still? 218, so you go know, slightly to your right. Oh, right, sorry. Yep. I'll just uh, distract you here for a second. If you look out the window, you can actually see the vapor trails coming out the air, back of that other aircraft out there. There we go, very good. So when we go to Hong Kong, do we actually take off from Hong Kong and then land again in Hong Kong? Yep, what we'll do is we'll take off from the new international one and then we'll head into the old one there. <laughs> Makes a good run in that way. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Have you been to Hong Kong at all before? Or? I go over here on my way to America. Yeah, oh, very good. Have you ever been into the old one at all? Or? Uh, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so we're just So what time are the girls bringing in lunch? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> you ever been to an island called St. Martin in the Caribbean? Uh, no, no, I haven't been there myself, no. Yeah, so, yeah. That's that's one I'd love to fly in there. I've seen a, uh, seen a few videos of planes going to yeah, there. So. on YouTube. Yeah, oh really, yeah. A lot of the ones where you see the people on the beach get blown away, yeah. <laughs> okay. KLM 747 was taken off and I got these three young kids going to stand on the beach. <laughs> they didn't know what I was on about. <laughs> it blows up a sandstorm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's coming off on our top of descent there. What I'm going to do is just disengage the auto throttles, give them to a squeeze them. Yeah, yeah. Yep, and then you're going to release and give them a second squeeze to confirm. And then you're just going to actually pull them all the way back. All the way? Yep. And then you're just going to lower your nose down just to the artificial horizon. Yep, so you just want to bang on that line. Very good. And that will just gently descend us. Gently go down? Yeah, just, just keep it there. That's good. That's just gently descending us there now. So you probably notice we powered all the way back. So we're actually just gliding in now. Good way to save fuel. Right. Uh, the engine's usually around about 20%. We're still sitting on about 41%. The reason for that is the uh, ram effect of the airflow pushing through the turbines now. So it's kind of like wind power in a way. So. These uh, aircraft are very good at gliding. If you're about 35,000 feet, for example, run out of fuel, can glide it for about another 90 nautical miles. Now, uh, anywhere in the western world should actually come across an airport you can land at about every 90 nautical miles. Nice and safe. What about those French pilots who flew an aircraft with no fuel and they landed in an island somewhere? I forget where it was. Uh, on uh, uh, aircraft, not aircraft investigation. Yeah, okay, well, no, I haven't heard of that case myself. But yeah, no. No. They've got the record for the world's longest glide of a jet. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Do you know how far they travelled at all? Or? Not sure. Not sure. No. <laughs> I might have to look it up or something. <laughs> it's the world's longest controlled glide. Yeah. Oh, wow. There we are. So we've dropped below that cloud base now, so a bit of a better view outside. Ah, uh, yep, so you come slightly to your right, just a touch.
Yeah, just oh, sorry, just keep on, just keep there on two one eight for now. There we go. So you got uh, Lake Wanaka out there to the right. And uh, that long skinny one down there to the left is Lake Dunson down by Cromwell, it's not far from Queenstown. Do they still use the steps in descent? Uh, not really, no. Well, sometimes they do, but... Well, point, okay, so you got two ways. There's one is your flight management computer. You, it actually works out for you where you're going to descend. You just tell it what, you, what uh, altitude you fly at. The other way is just your yeah, three times rule, a rule of thumb. So you go three times your height, so 24 times three is 72. So if, when you're 72 nautical miles away from Queenstown, you state your descent then. Sometimes you add 10 onto that as well, just to play it safe as well if you want. So. And if you just bring up your nose just to that artificial horizon again there for us. There we go. And just keep your nose up a little bit more there as well. Okay, what I just did there is I just brought up this dotted line you can see there. And that's just a runway extended center line showing the angle of the runway. So uh, this is just new information now, so it's just telling us to descend, which is what we've started to do, it's the descend page that we set up. Uh, and I'm just going to put on the approach page now. Okay, if you just keep that nose up just a little bit more for now.